that big development on the story down under police in australia are in touch with the gunman who's taken people hostage inside the lynn cafe in sydney he's come up with two demands he wants the isil flag in exchange of one hostage now the hostage taker also wants to make a call to the australian prime minister tony abbott the hostage taker has told the police that four bombs have been put at different locations two at the cafe two in the sydney business district this is the information that's coming from the female hostage inside that's the information that the australian police have shared so far but there is a bigger development that is taking place there is an unrelated or what is so far being termed as an unrelated incident that has taken place in sydney and i want to quickly cut across to rohit revo editor of indianherald.com.au who joins us on the broadcast from sydney uh, rohit what can you tell us about this other incident and join the dots for us please uh, the, uh, what has uh, come out in uh, during the uh, past hour is that uh, there have been terror raids in sydney on uh, during this weekend and two people have been arrested and it is believed that these uh, these hostage taker or the hostage takers inside lynn cafe they are part of this gang and this uh, the rest of the gang has advanced their plans and, and led to this terror raid uh, police has also uh, they have been confirmed reports now that police knows the identity of this uh, this attacker this hostage taker and there has been also subsequent terror raids in an area in city called cabramatta which is which is uh, in the suburbs and uh, police claim that these uh, arrests are not related but i believe that there is profiling of the person going on they would know exactly what he is doing and what his accomplices uh, other friends are and they would be doing that investigation hopefully they i'm thinking that uh, there could this whole thing could come to a good conclusion for for all the hostages as well as police have started to negotiate and uh, there are there are demands which uh, which we now know so we have, we can form a profile of this person who has taken these okay. hostages so and is hopefully is something there should come out sir. is there any information rohit so far in public domain uh, that you can share about who this hostage taker is what is his profile uh these these are details which we don't know at this stage but uh, there is a news co news conference so hopefully uh, by the news officer deputy commissioner and we should expect more details by about uh, about 30 or 40 minutes uh, i i am hoping that it will come come to an end soon uh, th these are really uh, unheard of demands of this hostage taker that he wants to talk to prime minister and he wants to get this isil flag uh, i'm i'm not sure what type of a person that is it it looks like a uh, Now, uh, he may have some okay. mental issues as well now there were also a series of raids over the weekend uh, there were some arrests what more can you tell us about these raids and arrests and is that in any way related to this current incident uh, that's what uh, most of the media people here in sydney are suspecting that the uh, arrest and and this uh, this attack today they, they are related we will have to wait and find out as you know that uh, australia is high on the uh, terror uh, alert it has uh, uh, you know uh, taken a notch up of its uh, security level so there's heightened uh, level of security there's heightened level of threat since the past one and a half months the australian uh, government from uh, tony abbott wants to pass harsher laws to stop the spread of terrorism and and stop the uh, those people who want to go out and fight with isil uh, australia has a big problem where some of the youths the marginalized and the radicalized youth are going to syria to fight and uh, that is a problem and who are seen as a threat there there is a, there has been a persistent threat of uh, uh, lone wolves as they call uh, call it that they would somewhere pop up and attack uh, and and create this sort of situation which is exactly what has happened this this has been forecasted before but we didn't know the location and the form of what would happen so things are going exactly uh, you know in in a, in a manner which which is uh, it's very uh, threatening to all the citizens of australia this is the first time it has happened i think i was speaking to few people and in the past uh, so many years it, 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 this threat has never been ever perceived it's i think it's only during the world war when japanese came to uh, attack australia and tried to okay. attack it such a fair so this is the first time people have started and they're seeing terrorism so close to their their own own workplace yes. their homes very very sad situation 
this indeed appears to be the case and what more can you tell us about the raids that took place over the weekend uh, were they just in sydney uh, who are do we know the identity of the two who were arrested in these raids uh the the only thing we know is that one of the person has been kept in a very high security prison and the other is also uh, other person has been arrested but uh, the new south wales police were supposed to have a press conference at 11 which couldn't happen due to these unforeseen circumstances i i believe now the full scale of why and how it it evolved and who who were the perpetrators will be known only when we have the final press conference by the new south wales police okay and there is a press conference that you say is expected uh, within 45 minutes now how credible is this information according to your sources in the police about four explosive devices being located uh, two inside the cafe and two elsewhere in the business district in sydney uh, look they, they they are unconfirmed reports at the moment but uh, what is very important is that there was a suspicious package which was located uh, inside the sydney opera house as a result of which sydney opera house was evacuated so uh, these are threats which which should be taken very very seriously uh, at this moment they are they are unconfirmed but i i would think that at this stage with the heightened police presence everywhere in sydney uh, at this point of time they would know and they would have possibly diffused those instances where they found those bombs okay so as of now the situation is this gunman is in touch with the police he's made two demands one is to get an isil flag uh, two is to speak to prime minister tony abbot uh do we know his uh, to this lone gunman his background uh, is he is he australian does he come from some other country is settled in australia uh this is unfortunately it's it's too early to know these details but there have been again unconfirmed reports that he is monitoring social media he knows exactly what the world uh, leaders have been are talking about and what the world is feeling about so he he has access to facebook and twitter and he he's perhaps monitoring and making his next moves based on that okay rohit revo for the moment many thanks for joining me keep tracking that story i will come back to you for more uh, we will continue to track this story very very closely there's a hostage crisis currently underway in sydney in australia uh, a short while back i spoke to one of the eyewitnesses nick let's listen in Yeah look um it started about 10 o'clock me time in the morning um there was one armed uh, gunman he um with a backpack we obviously don't know what was in the backpack um uh, but there was one armed gunman um and there was about 10 employees of the cafe in there already um and they're not sure about how many customers were there but the CEO of Lint estimates there to be at that time of the day there should be on average about 30 customers so the estimate is that there was something like 40 people there um and with the gu- gunman having them hostage earlier in the day he had um the hostages holding up um flags with with writing on it um which obviously that they weren't too clear on what it said but it it referred uh to islamic writing um but as, as the day has gone on the the prime minister of australia has made a statement um also the the state police have also have made a statement um and yeah in the last sort of one or two hours so this this has been going on for more than 7 hours now in the last one or two hours um five people have managed to escape from there um i think they're saying at this stage they've escaped not being let go but there's still no clarity on there um and the whole sort of street around there there's hundreds of police um and a lot of media people but it's all been locked off and traffic is like crazy it's kind of like traffic in india now in sydney the in the cbd as well okay and uh, uh is it, have these people spoken out the five who managed to get out how do we know that they've escaped and not been released nick um look there's no confirmation on it but i think that the media are saying that they've escaped not being let, and not being released Um I don't know if they've said anything um but they they were seen to be running out that's all I know Right and uh, you were there uh, when this gunman went inside the Lin cafe and took people hostage I wasn't there at the exact time I did go there later in the day 
Um, and I think just in terms of the actual, uh, you know, a lot of the people in Sydney, people are uh, like companies are letting people go home just because this is an event that in Australia it has it is not very common. So everyone is in a in a state of shock here. Um, and most importantly, wanting this situation to be resolved well and the people to safely, obviously, escape. Okay. And this, this, is this a lone gunman? Uh, there were some reports that seemed to indicate that there were two other people, at least. Uh, at least that's what the Daily Telegraph is writing. Two other people similarly attired, uh, you know, uh, they're wearing a similar T-shirt, a black T-shirt, white uh, writing and a headband. Any, can you tell us something more about that, Nick? Yeah, so the, there was reports that there was maybe two or three people, but the video and all the sort of uh, actual images have only shown one person by himself with a gun in his hand and a backpack. So it's confirmed that it's the one person, but if there's any additional people, there's no confirmation about that.